Hey humans, how's it going? Susan Ruth here. Thanks for listening to another episode of Hey Human Podcast. This is episode 262, and I had a conversation with Robin Rosencrantz and Michael Glover, and they are in the Bright Blue Gorilla Band. They're also filmmakers. They are world travelers. They've been pretty much everywhere on the planet in the last 30 years. And recently they put out a movie called 36 Husbands, and it is a mystical musical kung fu spy comedy. So how about that for a combo? I have really a kick in the pants talking with them. We went all over the map. We talked about philosophy and yoga and chakras and movies and deeper meanings and uh, music, all sorts of things. So it's just a fun, light conversation. This is a shorter one, which was a nice juxtaposition to last week's two-hour marathon, which I also loved. But, you know, sometimes it's nice just to have an easy, breezy, wonderful conversation. In other news, social media, Hey Human Podcast, can be found on Instagram and Facebook. You can find my personal social media at Susan Ruthism, that is S-U-S-A-N-R-U-T-H-I-S-M, and it's on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. You can email me, Susan, at heyhumanpodcast.com. Speaking of heyhumanpodcast.com, if you go there, you'll find the links page, and every episode has its own pile of links there on the links page. You'll also find the store on heyhumanpodcast.com where you can get merchandise that helps support the show. Uh, You can also uh, help support the show by donations. There's a little donate button on there. Uh, It's an ad-free podcast, so every little bit helps. And what else? Oh, if you like music, check out Susan Ruth uh, on iTunes or Spotify. And then to learn more about me just in general and to sign up on the mailing list, you can go to SusanRuth.com. All those good places. Rate and review Hey Human on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. Let's uh, get into this. Thanks for listening. Be well. Be kind. Stay safe. Uh, My prayers for those in conflict. And yeah, here we go. Robin and Michael, welcome to Hey Human. Hey. hey, how did you come to find each other? Uh, what's that story? I, I was actually born in Los Angeles in the San Fernando Valley. I'm a real valley girl. And uh, Michael, you. Where was I born? I don't know. Who am I? <laughs> what am I? Where am I? I was born in Michigan. Oddly enough. But where did Battle you grow Creek, up? Battle Creek, Michigan. I grew up in New Mexico, Albuquerque, okay. New Mexico. How'd you find each other? Uh, so when did you come we, to we LA? Found, I, I got a record deal with the, my band and we came out to LA about 80 and 80, when was it? 83, 84. They were called the Philistines and we opened for the Ramones and we toured with quiet riot. And it was, it was, you know, I was a teenager for the start of it. And then I, then I, I, when I was 18 on my 18th birthday, I signed my record contract because they were waiting till I was 18. So I could, so they could give me the full. 800,000 page contract. Right. But it was new wave punk, band. new wave punk band. But I came into LA, you know, with that band and then the band basically s- dissolved and I stayed in LA, uh, Robin and right. I started playing solo and Robin, I yeah. saw Robin playing at the coconut teaser. There's a club called the coconut teaser and on sunset Boulevard, sunset and Laurel Canyon. And oh. down below they had this acoustic room called the 8121. It was the singer songwriter room. So we both had a gig that night and um, Michael saw me play. Yeah, you you were playing. Yeah, you were playing while I came in, finishing her set. Right. And I thought, oh, she's really good. And she's really had the crowd working great. And 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 then we set up. Yeah, then Michael set up and then I saw a couple of his songs and um, I had to leave. Yeah, maybe you could. I had to leave. And um, so I couldn't meet him, but I thought, wow, this guy's really good. And I was looking for a guitar player and I thought he was really cute, Uh-oh. <laughs> but I, but I had to leave. So um, at that time I was actually a massage therapist before I was doing music part-time. So I wrote a note on the back of my massage card. It was like this your, big hand. Your manager gave it to me. And you, I yeah, think. I think my manager gave it to me saying, Hey, I'd love to get together and write some songs, you know, give me a call. And so and I was like, I was married at the time to somebody else. And I was like, uh oh, what is this? A massage thing. So it took me two weeks to call her. And I was like, yes, hello. Uh, my wife and I were looking at your card and uh, my wife and I were. <laughs> you always have to say that, you know, if you're married. I live in Hollywood. I'm with and- my wife. 
you know, after the first sentence has the wife like six times in it. And right. Then, and then so, but so Robin and I became friends. It was great. That was, I think that's mainly why it, it lasted this long. It's the first time with a woman that I've been friends first, really, like, except for being a kid or something, you know, when we were, cause we, we knew we liked each other, but we didn't want to do anything about it. So it was like a year went by where we were just friends and writing songs writing together, songs, getting to know each other. Yeah. That's- a lot of chemistry with the songwriting though. I have been in some rooms where honestly, without the chemistry, the song just doesn't pop, you know, it certainly helps. It does. It definitely. Does. But the first, the first song we wrote together was a love song. Yeah, we never, we actually have never we, played we've it. Never, we never quite finished it. We never it. quite finished it. Never played it. We Maybe 30 finished. years later, Someday we should finish we'll it. Right. No, you but can't. Was, Don't finish it. <laughs> Don't yeah, yeah, finish it. Yeah, that's shouldn't. true. But it was, um, yeah, it was a really interesting period because I knew right away, like, this is my soulmate. This is who I want to spend my life with. But I was really sad. I was really devastated because I thought we met at the wrong time. He's married and we'll never be together. And, you know, but at least we were building a really wonderful friendship. And so it really um, was a big surprise that we ended up getting yeah. together. And yeah, I remember I was going to therapy because because it was a it was not a good marriage, the first one. And, and my wife had gone back to New Mexico and I was going to follow her like a month later, but I had to finish the job I was working. So I was going to therapy, trying to figure out, you know, I like Robin. That feels bit right. And the other thing doesn't feel right. And the therapist basically, she said to me, cause she was also that my therapist was also the marriage counselor in the, in the marriage. And she basically said to me, look, I didn't want to tell you, I couldn't say it when your wife was sitting there, but you got a problem, buddy. You know, you, it's not going to work. You know, she's, she's really, she's really resistant to change at all. And, and it's going to be tough. If you feel you got something good with this, new woman, it might be worth exploring. And I said, but I don't what, I don't know. I don't know if I can, should I? She said, what do you want to do? Just pretend there's a magic button there. You could push it and your life would be exactly like you want. And so I said, well, I'd be with Robin and I would, I would leave the, you know, my wife and go with Robin. And she said, push the button. I love uh-huh. that, right? And, push and that I was magic like, yeah. button. So I remember I called her. This is, this is, uh, this is a vivid memory. I had my, this wedding ring. I don't wear a wedding ring now. I never, I never have this marriage because the first one, it bug, bugged me so much. This thing on my finger, it felt like. Especially as a guitar player, I feel like. Well, yeah, it, yeah, right. Yeah. And I also, I also do mechanics sometimes. I'm a mechanic. And so it's like, you know, that part, but also just felt like a chain. I didn't like it. And so it was gold though, a gold band. And I remember I was playing Bruce Springsteen really loud in the car. I had the windows down. It was nice and hot in LA. And I, I pulled up to a stoplight and I see across the street, this, this homeless guy's rummaging through the garbage and, and I, and I'm playing Springsteen and I look at that stupid ring and it glimmers in the sun. And I, I pull it off of my finger and I throw it towards the homeless guy and it rolls right and hits the curb right next to him and it falls down and i said pick it up and he like looked and it was a gold ring and, and i said take it and i like i took off and he picked it up thanks <laughs> so i was driving away it's like a music video right yeah yeah that was a great moment I and michael that. called me oh yeah i called you I, I was yeah i was working for a place <laughs> called the women's yellow pages at that point and it was all a big book full of women-owned businesses and um I said, I said, Robin, uh, yes, I just want to tell you, I'm getting a divorce and you and I are going to be together. I'll see you later. Okay. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like freaking out, you know, cause I was, I was really happy, but I was also really scared. Like, am I just going to be the transition woman? Yeah. That's Is this a are. good time to get involved a, with somebody. A 30 year transition, 30 year transition. Here we are. I'm going to celebrate 30 years married in November. Congratulations. That's awesome. I feel like this is a premise for an interesting film since your films are really avant-garde and bizarre. And that's a compliment <laughs> uh, that uh, you come together to write a song, but you don't finish it. And, and like the idea is that if you finish it, everything will explode. So you yeah, have to that's keep a great writing. idea. I like that. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> fun. I love it. I like the scene yeah. with the gold ring too. That would be great. <laughs> and then you flash forward and great. the guy, the homeless guy is and it's just like he took that money and invested it and then it did really well. And then now he oh, that sounds great. Hey, yeah. I like that. Good screen right now. I like right. that. That's really good. So when did you start touring together then? Was it right away? Yes. Right and, away. and and I got an ask though first. What did the ex-wife think of all this? Did she, oh, she go was very pleased? She sat down very calmly and said, Honey, I know that your happiness is really what I'm <laughs> after. And and so I I I'm pleased. Oh dear. 
I believe that's a sarcasm like, meter going off. <laughs> hit me back. You hit you what? You know, it was just, uh, it was rough, you know, it, but she, she was already gone. So I told her this, that long distance Meg, she'd been bugging me for a divorce for like a year, years. And just, it was very negative. And so I called her and said, you're right. Yeah. Well, you're right. The whole time. Let's get a divorce. You know, that's it. I'm, I'm going to hook, I'm going away with Robin. So let's work it out. And so then she shows up at my work. She, she flies back, back from New LA. Mexico. Yeah. And then uh, I, I used to work at the LA free clinic at that time. It was a free hospital. And I worked with a bunch of, you know, I worked in the fundraising department with a bunch of Beverly Hills women that were like wealthy women from Beverly Hills. And they were the ones that kind of brought the money in to keep it alive. And they were very protective of me and they all knew what was going on. And she showed up at the, at the door, like, I need to talk to you, you know, and, and they all really like, they all got up from their chairs. The ladies and surrounded me and said, you leave him alone. It's <laughs> like, it's okay, Mimi. It's okay. It's okay, Mimi. It's okay. Mimi. I'll, I'll go out. I'll go out. So I went out and, uh, and then went to the car with Meg and she was, you know, just mad and then trying every trick in the book to like, get, you know, come on, get me to go with her. And I said, Meg, come on. It's all right. And then there was something about the way I said it that she, I said, let's seriously, it didn't work. And then some about it, the way I said it, she just went, like went, yeah, you're right. It didn't. And that was, that was it. And then we, we, then we worked it out long distance and that's yeah. it. So I'm back in touch with her. So it's actually, yeah. Yeah. she came to one of our shows once. Yeah. She's a good the person, audience, but it just and... didn't work, but it was wrong chemistry. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. It's funny though. It's like, I don't want you, but not like hell of a lot anybody else have you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's, that's part of it. Isn't that how the, the appeal of anything It's like, yes. uh, that you can't quite get it, you know, makes it more. Yeah, that's funny. But that was so that was um fall 1989 and then um like 2 months later Michael and I were sitting and having breakfast in LA before going to our jobs. Yeah, cuz we didn't know what we were going to do. We just right? knew we were going to be together. And you know, we we were we wanted to do music full time, but in LA it was hard to survive as an artist, right? So we had our jobs. So we were having breakfast and I, and that's when I said to Michael, you know what, let's quit our jobs. Let's sell everything we have and buy one way tickets to Europe. And let's was, go travel and play music and let's just do it. And it was, it was obvious to me, the good idea. And I just said, yeah, great. And then she's like, oh no, I mean, we should think about it. I mean, <laughs> I was like, don't really rush into do anything. It? And I was like, no, no, it's a good idea. Let's do it. It's done. Great idea. I know a good idea. I want to hear it. And then, you know, we just, Took, Lit- took a few months for us to get everything together and to leave the jobs honorably and all that stuff. And we sold, listen, we sold everything we had. It sounds like a big deal. We, we raised $408 at a garage sale. You know, that was it. I mean, it's like, we, we, we were not, not, you know, no, no condos to sell or anything like that, but it was too enough for two one way yeah. tickets to Amsterdam cheap ticket at, at the time. And that was May, 1990. So we got it together pretty fast. We just had our guitars you know? and backpacks and started playing. Robin knew a couple of cafes in, in Holland. We got a gig and then we, we busked a little bit and we, and then within really fast things started to happen. This guy said, Oh, I know a guy with a studio. Your cassette tape sounds terrible. You should get a new one. And then we ended up getting a record deal within like a year and a half or something of like that. Right. Wasn't it 92? Or maybe two years. Yeah. No, about two Virgin years. Records two years later, we got to deal with Virgin Records in, in Netherlands. And we'd been struggling here for ever trying to get make it kind of. And uh, yeah, but we said we're not going to wait around L.A. to get discovered, to get permission to live our lives. Let's just go create it. I love that. And that was a, it was a great, right? great, great idea. And yeah. And literally from the day we landed, amazing things happened. And like Michael said, one thing led to another and things just opened up and. The universe supported us. And somehow for 30 years, we keep on keeping on. Now, I have to give a caveat because it sounds so romantic and everything, but it's really, it's really well, it is like, romantic. But... It is great. But <laughs> one night we're in a beautiful place, like even occasionally like a five-star hotel when a big club puts us in there. The next night we're staying in a student dormitory <laughs> with Bob, who has not done his laundry for seven weeks. And it's in the same room where we're sleeping. <laughs> so this is the kind of up and down and up and down it is. Same with shows. Literally, I'm t- I'll tell you a true week. One day we're opening or we're the hosts of the Liberation Day Festival in Amsterdam. It was 40,000 people. We're the hosts of the whole day. We play once an hour all day long, right? The next day we're playing in a sailor's bar <laughs> with seven drunk guys at the bar. That was our crowd. And we're trying to like, it was one of those gigs where I had to say, Robin, 
don't close your eyes, you know, <laughs> because you, you don't know what they're going to throw at you or what's going to come up at you. So it was it'd been like that. And, uh, but at the same time being practicing yoga, and that's the whole point of it, that is inner, inner connection, inner communion, and also even mindedness, you know, under all conditions <clears throat> when it's really going great, you enjoy, but not totally carried away. And when it's going terribly, you don't, that's all right. You know, this too shall pass. That's kind of the, the, the whole vibe of that. And, and you're we, like, what's the lesson? Cause there's yeah, always what, a lesson, what, right? What do I get from this? Yeah. What, why do I, why did I bring myself to this? Why did I bring myself to this situation? Why did I attract that to myself? What is the lesson? Is that so why there's such an energetic thing going on in, in your movie, 36 husbands? Is that, that's usually, that it's always in there. There's always mysticism in there. You know, I, I try to joke around with it, but it's, it's all based on, you know, that sort of, mystical viewpoint that there's always something that you attract yourself to a situation for a reason. What is it? What am I supposed to learn? And that the principle of life really is to learn. We're evolving. That's the whole thing. The whole universe is expanding, evolving. Everything is evolving. And so we, as humans, we're not done. You think this is it? I hope not. So we, we need to get, <laughs> we need to, to develop. And earth is a school, right? It's just yeah. one lesson after another. So better love learning because that's what it's all about. I mean, the idea that it's expanding, but it's also coming back to itself, which is what we do our whole lives, right? It's yeah, that right. figuring out the balance of expanding and coming back to oneself. That's a tricky one. Well, the, 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 where I would put it is what is self? That's the tricky part. Now, the self, we, we typically think of it as your body. But it isn't. It's this shell that you're in. It's this car you're in. So what is you? Oh, you're the mind. You're the personality. You're the person that likes uh, saltwater taffy and hates coconut. You know, no, that's personality. That's a that's put upon you. It's a layer. Take that layer off. What's under that? You know, that's the nice thing about any kind of uh, deep deep practice. There's so many good paths. You know, the 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 Tai Chi path and all the different paths. The, the way the the Tao. All that stuff, Buddhism, anything that points your, even Christianity, if you go deep enough, if you really go deep enough on a personal connection with that great master, then you can really start peeling off the layers and become more solid, more pure, more beautiful. Getting to know your soul, right? Your most joyous self. And, yeah. And there's so many words for the soul and all that, but the, the, re, the real you, the essence of it. Tell me about the practice. I don't know a lot about that kind of yoga. It's mainly meditating. I mean, you, you sit, you, 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 it's not the Hatha yoga so much, although that's helpful because it, it, Hatha yoga's purpose, the physical yoga, the purpose of it was to allow you to sit for a great long periods in stillness. That was the point. It wasn't to get ripping abs and have great looking, you know, biceps, although it does that, but it's, it's the point is to be able to sit still for four, six, eight, ten 10 hours and not move. And so that when you're, when you're meditating deeply and you, it's all based around breathing, going within sort of shutting down the body functions and going into the spine. You've seen the picture that in the hippie shops of the, of the, all those chakras on the right energy centers. Yeah. And those are actual energy points in the spine. It's very subtle, but they're there. And each one has a certain quality to it. And the, typically in a human being, the lower three are, are very active. That's the, Sex Not this year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When the heart center starts to open, you're more compassionate, more loving, more, you know, more of sort of human, you know, less animalistic. And then the ones above that are higher functioning. So the point is to get into the higher chakras and to really go within. And it's it, it, funny, oddly enough, it's the same system in virtually every mystical religion, including Christianity, although a lot of people don't recognize it, the whole thing of Revelation, the book of Revelation is talking about the chakras, the seven candlesticks, he calls them, or seven churches, the seven chakras, and they're light. And, and the one in the forehead is the single eye. If thine eye be single, then their bo thy body shall be full of light. That's from the the, the new testament also called so the spiritual eye. It, it's right. all in there these were mystics that wrote these things it wasn't like and no, then no, and something. then religion took over and started yeah, yeah, uh, re it became political. yeah it became political, political right? dogmatism yeah. you know all power controlling people that's yeah. the real essence but of, you get to the essence yeah. of all that and even the illusions that i as i understand it a little i understand of it in in the muslim faith it's the same kind of thing they constantly mention lamps and things like that and, and all these you know 
It all has the same foundation. It all kind of has the I same mean, it's foundation. A, it's amazing, really. It's, you know, going within, stilling the body, stilling the mind, expanding your consciousness, feeling your real self, which is pure joy, pure peace. And so every day we spend time with, you know, scientific healing meditation techniques, um, tensing and relaxing the body and breathing in a certain way, certain concentration technique. And it's pretty amazing. It, it works. You know, after a while, the body stills, the mind's not going a million miles a minute. And you just, you start to feel this expansion and you start to feel so happy and so centered. And yeah, then quite, the secret is nice. taking that into your day with all the lessons, all the things yeah, that come to you. Yeah. Can you keep that peace within and still learn your lessons and interact with people? That's, that's where the real practice begins. Yeah, that's, You need the, both the contemplative moments and then you need the activity of life because you have to be tested. Everybody's a, everybody's a saint when they're by themselves in their room and, Oh, isn't it great? I get along with everyone and I'm just so <laughs> mellow and, you know, but then go out in the world for five minutes, you know, see how you do with the Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting too. I, I think back to the name of uh, bright blue gorilla because the blue chakra is the, is the throat, right? And it's, it's, it's communion and conversation and if it's bright and we are you know we're monkeys you know so to speak i like that uh, illusion of with an a of the bright blue girl you nice. know yeah it's also that, that's kind of neat i never never that thought chakra about is also that, the calmness it's also calmness chakra and so if you if you if you integrate calmness with your speech you know and it, that that's even more powerful isn't it if you can speak from that place but when you're getting agitated in your speech what does that do so it's it's it there there's it's there's a lot of great techniques anything i would just advise anyone interested in that sort of thing to just find something that works for you and start the important thing is you practice it get 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 a little strong with yourself and practice it every day a couple of times a day is better than once a short meditation in the morning and a short meditation in the evening can really start to transform you. It's, it's funny, especially the polarities, the morning, evening, morning, evening, even if it's only, if you can only do five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever, just start the practice and be regular, as regular as you can. Then you'll, you'll see after a while that no, it's not, it is doing something. It'll change Something's your life, on. right? It's like learning an instrument. You have to yeah. put time into anything that you want. Yeah. To I do a meditation every morning and every night. And uh, I can right. tell on the days that I, I forget or get too busy. I can always tell the difference on those yeah, the next yeah, day. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, for sure. Also, that's it great. gets really weird after a while because things get so obvious, like uh, your, your intuitive factors faculties really awaken you really start to that's one of the higher centers the one in the medulla is intuition and it's like you just start to know stuff that you can't possibly know and you're like that can't be right but then you check and it is right oh how, what's that and also funny things happen to you like you get if you're in harmony here's the here's i think this is how it works after just putting it in my own words when you're attuning within and you go deep enough you're connecting with the big source you know, God is a word for it. And there's a lot of great words, but the big source, right? And that's the source that's manifesting everything that's sort of projecting this, this physical universe as we see it. We see it as solid, but it's sort of a projection of energy. And it, you're attuning with that. So I think what starts to happen is your desires start to get more in harmony with what is going to happen. I think that's how it works. And in some cases, I think maybe things are brought to you that you need. But for example, Robin and I were in India, our, one of our trips, early oh, yeah. trips, and, and we were sitting in India, okay, like a billion people there. And we're sitting in India and we're trying to, we're, we're wanting to go back home a little early. Or like, go, go to Europe. We, we were in New Europe, Delhi. and we, Well, that's what I meant by home. Yeah. I meant Holland. We had a tour starting yeah. in Holland. Yeah. And I, th I think it, I think we were five and a half months into the trip. But we were it was supposed a to be six of, months, but a little illness, the yeah, body. Yeah, because that happens over there. So we thought, let's go, let's go back to Holland a little bit earlier before the tour starts so we can rest. But we didn't have a place to stay. And we really didn't have much money oh, because yeah, we, the tour was going to start, right? Yeah, we really did not enough to do any rent, anything. anything. So, so we're sitting there and we're talking about this or we're thinking about this. And we went, well, let's go get a, something to eat. So we went to this restaurant and where the, a lot of Westerners go is a lot of those places. And these two Dutch people sat down next to us and they're speaking Dutch. And we said, Oh, you're from Holland. And I said, yeah, yeah. And we said, Oh, we, we, we tour there. You know, we, we play there a lot. Oh, where are you from? Oh, you wouldn't know it. And they said, Mar uh, where? And they said, Marsenbrook. We said, we know Marsenbrook. We have a friend there. And they said, who? We said, Willem Vlockfeld. She said, he's my next door neighbor. 
And I said, I said, well, wow. She said, you know, he's, he's house sitting now for the Schwartzes. I just met him at the airport. He was taking him. All. Now we knew that Willem house sat for this, this people with a big house. And whenever he did, his apartment was empty for like six weeks. And so we, 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 we went to the, one of those pay phones where they, they do international calls by the minute thing. And so we, we call Willem, say, Willem, Willem, we hear that you're house sitting the Schwartzes, you know? And he's like, how did you know that? <laughs> and we said, these Dutch people sat down next to us at the table. And, you know, I mean, it's like so ridiculous. Can we stay in your apartment? Yeah. Can we come back early from India? And he was, he was like, what are the odds of that? And so, yeah, he said, of course you could stay at my apartment. So, But that's right? the thing is that that weird synchronicity starts happening. I, yeah. it's, I said to my roommate a couple times now this week, where I said, do you remember we were just talking about this? And then it's in the crossword puzzle. I'm doing this random word that, you know, that I just happened to say the other day that her dog reminded me of Alf. Who's thought of Alf in the last 20 years? And then I was doing my crossword puzzle this morning and the very first word was Alf. Yeah. And I was really? like, okay, I know that's a weird synchronicity, but that is so weird. No, I haven't seen that word that. written anywhere. <laughs> you know what that right? is? I'm telling you, those are little hints. Those are hints from the, the cosmic source that are saying, look, this is how it works. And they're giving you little hints to get, to keep you going and to get you, encourage you to go deeper. I think little signs to inspire yeah, yeah, you that's to, what and is. to show that, Hey, your intuition is awake. Yeah. Right? I, this is another random one. And I know it's not about me, but this just to prove your point is that a couple weeks back, um, there was a band in my town growing up called goodness is very successful band. And then, you know, they broke up and as bands do and all this. And just randomly, I wasn't even on this mailing list. Um, I don't know why I got this email. They said, hey, this is the old label of goodness. And we're redoing, we're putting out their t-shirts again. And I always liked the t-shirts. I never had one back in the day. So I was like, I'm just going to order a goodness t-shirt. And so I did. And uh, it arrived and along with a little sticker. And I was like, oh, this is fun. Didn't think anything of it. And the next day... The lead singer of that band posted on her Facebook, and we're not Facebook friends, saying, hey, I'd love to find a podcast to be on. And then one of our mutual friends contacted me and said, oh, you should interview her for the podcast. This all happened within a you know 48 hours for this band I hadn't thought about in 20 years. Wow. Yeah. It's weird. Don't you, you. don't you love it? Don't you love when those things happen? And it was a great interview. It was amazing. So it's We're just weird. It's so weird. Just, listen, go deeper, go deeper, go farther because there's a, it, you're on the beam. You know, it's like that. Those sports people call it in the zone. Yeah. And, and, and it's kind of the same thing that they can function so much more than is normally possible. And, and you're, you're getting a lot of assistance there because that that's, what all the ancients have tried to get people to do since the beginning of time is like, come on, guys, your business is fine, you know, but that's not everything. And OK, you need a little money, but let's not focus too much on that. Let's, you know, what yeah. is the reality? What is your reality? Reality is the thing inside. You go deep enough and you'll find out what reality is. Talk to a quantum physicist. Talk to a quantum physicist. They'll start to tell you, no, 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 this is not really that real. This is a projection. These are molecules being, these are, these are protons and so on being projected. It's, well, where is it coming from? That's But what they've already from. proven that if you act upon uh, uh, an electron here or proton here, over there, separated it responds yeah yeah so they're proving it it's beautiful it's amazing so stuff, yeah right? so keep on going you know <laughs> what the mystics were saying you know thousands of years ago you know we're 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 proving with science and eventually they'll prove it yeah. so we can prove it ourselves which is more practical but yeah. you know just trying this stuff out and seeing if it works do it if it doesn't work try something else be your own but spiritual scientist yeah <laughs> amen to that let's get into the right. songwriting how did you find your voice as songwriters because you are left of center you're singing about very quirky things uh some of it's kind of fun it's very energetic but it's not your run-of-the-mill songwriting in my humble opinion Thanks. Well, Thanks. We, we just I like wanted, <laughs> I was always a story type of person, you know, I was writing short stories and my songs always usually had a story to them. And Robin was more poetic. She sort of got more into the subconscious and it would write lyrics that way. Yeah. But we were never really that interested in like, Oh baby, you broke my heart and da da da. You know, it's like, or trying you know. to write a top 10 hit or right. It was, I think part of it might be, 
just our life adventure, just being out in the world for 30 years, having this unique adventure, coming into contact with all these amazing people around the world. And um, the experiences, I think they kind of get into our songwriting, right? So it's like, like one of one of uh, the songs Michael wrote that I love so much. I don't I don't think we sent it to you is Napoleon's coat. It's kind of an audience favorite, and it's it's really a story song. And um, tell tell her what the yeah, song's it's about. It's basically and... about a, a a security guard, a little short guy that works at a museum that has Napoleon's coat on display. And when it, when the museum's closed, he takes it out and he puts it on and looks at himself and everything and sort of starts changing his life the vibes of the coat sort of changes make him more confident and and <laughs> it's that kind of thing. right but part of what inspired that is we had gone to the napoleon museum in paris yeah and, and right so you had found, napoleon on your mind yeah she was robin is about and, the same size as napoleon hey without the stomach <laughs> yeah yeah but and she used to wear at that time she was wearing a, an army coat around during the winter and so we had that at the foot of the bed hanging up and so every night i'd when i was half asleep i'd see that and, oh, napoleon's coat so it kind of crept in and one morning i just wrote that one was a quick one i wrote you woke that up one early about, and wrote it took right? about a half an hour to write it and then i woke up and said hey listen to this song and it turned out to be one of the you know the, the lucky ones just yeah the travels everywhere and you know, uh, yeah, we just there's and, a lot to talk about in the world and in the in the in the in the fiction stories. And people tend to just go again and again and again to just like, you know, boy meets girl, boy loses girl, boy meets boy, boy loses boy. Whatever. Right. But it's like, do we need more. another love song? There's more than that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How about the filmmaking? What brought you into that realm? That was a funny uh natural transition yeah so i mean we both always really love movies and i mean i grew up watching a lot of movies you know michael did and we both love the classic movies but at one point we said you know what let's go back to la for a while and get our our music into film and tv and also let's get into movies as actors wouldn't that be fun so i remember because you know being on stage is like being an actor so we came back to L.A. and I think we even took a couple acting classes and then we decided to sign up with the um, casting agency, Central Casting. The like, background. Background, right? They're one of the biggest like in the country. So we said that might be fun just to be background actors and hang out on a movie set. So we heard they were casting the movie with Alec Baldwin and Matthew Broderick and they wanted artistic looking type people to play uh, Matthew Broderick's friends. So I sent in our headshots and we have two different last names. So, you know, the agency didn't know we were together. And all of a sudden I got a call, Michael got a call and they said, Hey, we want you to come over to Disney and we want you to meet the director, Jeff Nathanson. He's going to direct this movie called the last shot. And so we were like, well, this is amazing. Usually the director doesn't want to meet the background actors, right? That's kind of weird. So we go over to Disney and Jeff Nathanson, the director, is going around to each person. I think there are about 30 actors in the room saying, hey, what have you done lately? What's going on? And I said, oh, um, we just got back from Europe and uh, we were on tour. Can I give you a CD? Always have a CD in your bag. And he goes, yeah. And, and he looks at the CD and he's like, wait. Wait a minute, you guys are a band. You two guy, you two You're together, a band? you're a band. Wait right here. And we're like, oh, what's going on? And then the assistant director came out and she said, Will you come to the back office? We're like, okay. So we're like, what is this? And she said, you know, we've been trying to cast a musical couple for months. And we haven't found anybody we like yet. Do you want to audition tomorrow? They said. I oh mean, my god. This is weird. What <laughs> is and then they said, "You know Barry Manilow's look like we made it, don't you?" And I said, "Oh yeah." You know, of course we don't play covers, so I didn't know Just Barry say Manilow. yes. But Always just, say yes. Always say I yes. Went to the Tower All Night Tower record store but at that time they were still existing and uh, we bought I bought the Ultimate Manilow, which I highly recommend to all you. Yeah, it's very good. Yes. Yeah. Right. And I, I was in a, in a play at the time. So I had to go to play rehearsal. Michael was like learning the song. I, learned the I came home late at night. We're like, OK, let's learn this song. The auditions at Disney tomorrow. So we went there and we and we we uh, decided to do, you know, usually the acting people tell you where like 
you know, neutral clothing, you know, so that you just, you stand out. But we thought, no, we're bright blue gorillas. So we wore our crazy loud clothes and we show up and we, we do the songs, do the song and they like it. And then we, we, we say, okay, thanks a lot. And we leave. And then we were driving away and we think, well, we did our best, just let go. And we, we did, did our part. And then the phone rings right then. And they said, Hey, this is Rosemary. The, uh, the second AD, you know, you, you, they want to hire you. So you're, you're, uh, you're on. So be it at this studio to record the song, be it at Western costume at this time, blah, 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 all this stuff. This was all within a couple of days. And like, then we weren't quite on sure. On a Friday night, they said, we want you. And then I think Sunday, the recording studio, Monday, wardrobe, fast, Wednesday fast. on set. But we I weren't mean, sure what we last had. Minute. We weren't sure. Cause I thought we were background. I wasn't, I didn't know. And so then we, we end up, okay, well, we did the stuff and then we go, to the set and we start walking towards where the background people are. And then this assistant person says, Oh no, 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 no. You guys are principals. You're not, you know, background. And they pulled us to our trailer. Here's your trailer to Matthew Broderick. <laughs> what? Uh, Cause we were like, like part of the movie. And I was like, Oh wow. I didn't know. And then we called SAG and they said, Oh yeah, you guys are on a principal contract. You're not background. And so crazy. for six weeks, so were you already SAG then before you got the, yeah, we were already were, thank we goodness. Were, yeah, we fortunately. Were. Yeah. And, and the good, the good thing is that, okay. So it was supposed to be just one song and one scene one day, one, one day, song. right. But Robin and I rehearsed, I, I actually, okay. There was, I forgot about that part. We, 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 I, we know people at Disney. We have friends that work there and it was a Disney production for, for touchstone Disney. And I call, I saw the little script piece that they had us singing the song in. I, they just sent a one sheet, and I said, I don't know. This doesn't seem like the what we would sing at his party, celebrating party. We would make up our own lyrics to it, and we would we would celebrate with him and make some joke out of it. So I called my friends at Disney. And said, Can you get me a script? So they they got me a script, and I saw. Oh yeah, of course that makes sense. What I thought. So I rewrote the lyrics in a sort of a funny way that you would sing to your friend at his party because he got a big a big celebration and so i sent that off to disney he faxed it faxed it to get their approval but i didn't hear we go to this we go to the set we're ready to do the thing and the the director comes over and goes so what are these lyrics you wrote and i was like so apparently he heard about it so we we played him the lyrics and he starts laughing he loves it he says hold wait 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 he says stan come over here that was the big producer big producer came over play the song he play the song the guy's laughing he says great let me see if i can clear this he's laughing he gets on the phone and then so we did our version about a hundred times live over and over they but, but it was it a parody of of the barry manilow or was it your it own actually the partridge family there were two songs they wanted us to sing one was the one was the come on get happy partridge yeah, family come on, get happy and we changed okay. the lyrics to both of those guys and then looks like we made it looks like we made it and yeah. then um <laughs> and then we We'd recorded a version in the studio, including with my other lyrics. We had a other version. We were supposed to do lip sync, but then he said, "You guys are you guys are really good, so let's not do lip sync. Just go live." Go so live. we had to play it a hundred times without making a mistake. Well, Alec Baldwin is on my shoulder, and I'm turning. I have to turn to Matthew Broderick and catch my exactly the right the the right place and not be in the wrong position, right? And not make any mistakes. And we did it. We fortunately we were well because of good, all our years really of good. touring together and doing so many live gigs we were ready for that so that okay yeah. so we did that all day and then the assistant comes over again and says he was supposed to be that was supposed to be at the end of the job but she says you know jeff really likes what you guys did today and he's going to write you in the rest of the movie as recurring characters what? So you're available for the next six weeks and i was like well, let me check my account <laughs> And yet, so of course we said yes, and it was the most fun gig we we ever had. We worked with Buck Henry on that one. Buck Henry, we had we had lunch with him. Yeah, was so cool. it was such a fun Alan gig, Baldwin. you know. And Tony Collette, Tony oh, Collette, loved Tony great Collette. actors. And yeah. they had us right. entertaining the actors in between takes. They had a great gig. So that, but that yeah, was a they had a Hollywood us, paycheck, and that gave yeah. Us so the, then, the so then we were the so inspired. We're like, you know, what? we're going to take the Hollywood paycheck and buy a camera. And we're going to start making our own movies because Michael's a writer. All our friends in L.A. are actors. We're musicians. We're actors. Let's just do it. I'm not going to spend the money to go to film school. You know, we're going to learn by doing. Each film's going to get better. And we never made a short. We dove in and made a feature. Yeah, we're seven, so crazy. Seven feature films. <laughs> the, the 36 Husbands, the new one, is our seventh. Right? So we, but we that's how the to, filmmaking happened. It just going. It was just kind of organic. And then... You know, it just kept going. We every couple of years, we said time to make a new movie and we, you know, 
call up all our friends all around the world that we've met. Let's come together and, and make another film. My favorite scene in that, in the 36 Husbands, I don't want to give anything away, but my favorite scene was the earring scene. That, oh, that made, good. I laughed out loud at that because it was just like every person like popping up and the dancing. That There was something so Marx Brothers about that whole scene that just ki- it killed me. I thought that was really Isn't funny. Great. I'm, I'm glad, so I'm glad, glad to hear that. I mean, yeah. I've seen it hundreds of times, that but one, I still that laugh at that scene. That. Like when I hear the audience laughing, it makes me laugh. Yeah, that scene is really funny. <laughs> it's Thank fun, you. right? Oh, well, and the women, the women leads are are hilarious too, uh, in their own way. They're just the weird, quirky. But um, the uh, brunette who has to get up on the stool to to kiss. I don't want again. I don't want to give anything away. But Gina, so, yeah. Tina, that was a funny moment too. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. yeah, it was just it was it was delightful. But I, my favorite scene was the dancing earring scene. I just thought that was hilarious. Yeah, I, I I tend to I'll write all the scripts to have a the crescendo. I, I tend to slowly walk people up to that crazy, ridiculous moment at the end. And if they, if they can get through the first 10 minutes of the movies, you know, cause it's a different kind of movie making. It is different. Yeah. And it's slow. I build it slow. And then, then usually there's a, the good payoff. Yeah. yeah like, but it sucks you in regardless, you know, okay. which is what yeah. you want. Right. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, so what's fun. next for, for y'all? That well, that's we, what we're we've been talking about. That I mean, I have like a million ideas for movies, so that's not a problem. You got to do the love song one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. That's a good. I like your script better. But um, so, but we're not exactly sure what we're doing because we'll first of all we'll see how long this COVID thing happens, and we may tour again starting in 2022, hmm. and then we might make another movie or we. There's a in the yoga path. There's they break up life into what they call ashramas. The first ashrama is like youth and childhood. The second ashrama is marriage and 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 family. family. The third one is like teaching and and that kind of thing. And the career. fourth the fourth ash and career. And the fourth ashrama is withdrawing and concentrating fully on your practice. And so we're definitely getting close to the fourth ashrama. We feel, and so we may end up just sort of pulling back and and end up going to to India for quite a while and spending time in Indian ashrams and also uh, in our, our own ashrams, our own centers in the United States. What happens if you're not in that place at the same time? In what, which place at the same time? What do you mean? The fourth ashram. No, in no, your mind, mean, in your heart. You know what I mean? Oh, but no, what if you're, it, it, it what if you're be, out of sync? Oh, well that that's going to be normal. Cause it's, it's a gradation. It doesn't go from one to the other. It's like, yeah. and also our modern life is filled with all the different things. You know, you, you do a bit of everything in every s- segment. It's not like you stop eating or something, you know, you don't like you ha- stop, have to earn money. Maybe you still have to earn money, but what is the main focus of your life? What is the, the, what is revolving? What is it revolving around? Yeah. We're, we're, we're thinking about that as well. And we may do that. I, 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 Look forward to getting off of Facebook with a big announcement at some point. <laughs> <laughs> We're leaving the world now. But you spend Thank so you. much time on our computers, right? I mean, I love engaging with people. That's what I do love about Facebook and interacting and talking with people. And, you know, that that is special. People How come every time the world? I come in the room, you're looking at a cute animal video? <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> animal videos. <laughs> Look at this elephant. Oh, the bird and the dog are best friends. Don't you understand? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's it's so, so cute, right? But yeah, it's it's interesting, this this whole slowdown. It's definitely um, having an effect on us. Feeling really content and really good and just being and slowing down. And but it's it's it is it's an interesting feeling, even though I love what I do. I love when I'm touring and singing and engaging with audiences, and I love the filmmaking and and I love it all, but I'm also like kind of feeling, I don't know that I might want to just go deeper into my spiritual life. That's really when I feel happiest and uh, maybe not so much concentrate on the whole career thing and just serve, do some kind of serving, service. helping others. That's, that's yeah, good. we'll see. So we'll, we'll see. see. We're getting there. We're having lots of, lots of conversations about it. You know, all the, the, the contentment and stuff you're talking about, it's like, that's one of the things that's really important to just keep your eyes on. It's fine to be active. You know, this is a plane of action. Being lazy is not a virtue, you know, so it's fine to have desires, ambitions. It's just nice if you can continually refine them 
And you can continually examine them and say, what is the essence of this? Like, for example, if somebody that really wants wealth, it might not be wealth that they're after. It might be a sense of security that they're after. So it's like you analyze your, your motives and your desires very carefully and see what's the core of this. Even someone, let's say somebody who's uh, very promiscuous, they're looking for love maybe, or some kind of comfort. It's not necessarily that they want sexuality all the time. It's just that they're, so what is the essence of the, when you get to that, you can really cut through a lot of, a lot of bad uh, situations that you get yourself in. Absolutely. Yeah. And the essence of this is this, oh, I see. That's what I'm after. Oh, so it's fine to have, be not, not uh, content not feel, meaning that you feel like you have to do certain things. It's okay. Mm -hmm. One thing is I, I do believe it's important to stay curious. To what? Stay curious. Oh yes. Stay absolutely. curious in one's life. Yeah. Definitely. Well, if you're not, then that kind of says something you're sort of shutting down, I suppose. Right. And, and or, you know, everything, but I don't <laughs> think that's the case. I don't think so. Right. Mm -hmm. but that's one of the things. Yeah. Curiosity is what I have loved about our lifestyle is traveling for 30 years and staying with people, everybody has a story. And if you would just be a good listener and ask questions and not talk about yourself all the time, like most people do, it's so inspiring to hear other people's stories. And that's, that's been one of the, you know, the most inspiring things, I think, Yeah. getting to actually live with people around the world, you know, not just meet for lunch for an hour or two, but when you stay at someone's home for a day or a couple of days or even a week, you really get to know each other and you become a part of each other's lives. Yeah, the world is OK. I, I would, you know, I would say after doing this, you know, if you watch news and you read the paper and stuff, you get a little bit. Oh, boy, what's happening? But if you go and do what we do, where you staying with actual human beings week after week in different countries, you realize that actually people are pretty good. You know, it, it's it, we're not that far gone. Yeah, cultural that's good to hear. <laughs> yeah, that's good to hear. Uh, yeah, the cultural stuff might be different, but the essence of who we are and to be present for people. I think to really be in the space where you are, uh, where you are there for them fully. And as you're learning about them, you learn so much about yourself, I think. That's that right. mirror, that mirror thing, you know? Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. And that, that's, mm -hmm. that's something that really does open people up because we're, we're also safe to talk to because we're passing through. We're not in the community. So mm -hmm. we get very often, we get the guy look, looks left and right and says, you know, I've never told anybody this, but I always wanted to X, Y, and Z, you know? And we're like, oh, well, that's interesting. Well, have you ever done, have you ever thought about doing that? that you know, and we kind of oftentimes give them permission to, to do the thing they've always dreamed of doing. And then, Later on, we'll find out that they actually did it. And sometimes we hear from people say, God, you said that thing to me that day. And it was, I was like, oh, good. I was like, what did I say? What Isn't that say? so interesting? The idea of needing to find permission outside. There's a line in that uh, 36 Husbands movies where she says, where the, the head lady says um, about how energy, you know, you don't need permission outside. It's all inside of you. And that thing where they just touch points and they direct the energy and it made me you, think you about that. that. Some people don't get that. Some yeah. people don't get, get the, what you just said. I'm glad you got that. I love it. <laughs> yeah. So it is that that thing about seeking permission outside of ourselves when we are the entire universe within ourselves. You know, it's all in, but it's hard to remember, right? It's this life of remembering. We get hit, we get hypnotized. But you, that's that's you know, that goes back to my point of we're our whole Michael, our whole thing started where we're not going to wait around LA to be discovered to get permission to do what we love. Let's just go create a life. And that is the way we actually life. lived our whole life <laughs> because we've been so independent. And I, I think it's been a blessing. I think we've learned way more that way than if some, you know, record company or movie studio would have scooped us up and did everything for us. You know, we had to learn everything ourselves, wear all the hats ourselves, but I think we've grown so much that way. But I'm so happy that we made that decision and that, you know, figure out how to make a movie yourself, figure out how to book a tour yourself, figure out how to promote a tour yourself, just learn by doing. And we all have those powers within ourselves, you know, but, but we're, we're afraid we don't think we do. And one of the main um, lessons we've learned is not to be afraid to ask for help. Mm -hmm. You know, by asking for help, you allow other people to be a part of your life. 
and to have also have an adventure with you. And that's, that's been the biggest blessing of our life. All these people around the world coming together, helping us. Do you, you remember know, those uh amazing remember those Andy uh, Mickey Rooney and uh Judy Garland movies the Andy sure. Buddy films yeah where it's like hey kids let's put on a show you know I can you know because somebody needs an aunt Edna needs a kidney transplant or something you know and so it's like we could we could use this the paint from my old man's barn we could use it you know and that's kind of what we do that's how we do these movies is I, I usually say to our artist friends hey you know what if we did X Y and Z wouldn't it be and they go, oh, you, wow, yeah, we could do that. I said, and we could do this. What if we did that? Do what? What about that? How would you do this? Said, well, oh, I got an idea. Da, da, da. And that's kind of what we do. We facilitate. We give them an idea. We say, this is the idea. Everybody want to do this? And people that get excited, we all do it. We, we had 300 people for the next, last movie and, and the one before as well. Yeah, there were a lot of people in that movie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, all yeah. those credits. Yeah. <laughs> I like the outtakes too. I love outtakes. So nice. fun. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the thing. I think we are raised up to believe that we're not allowed to not know something because that's weakness. When in fact, I think one of the most powerful things you can do is ask for help. But boy, that's a scary. Uh, yeah. Once you get used to it, it's it, it becomes a habit. It's kind of cool because you get to you get to see what happens when you do it. It's like, what if I asked this person for that? What would ha- what would they do? And just to see what they do, and then you and, and then you're you're fine with no. No is fine. I love no. It's great. Thank right? you. But most you know? people say yes, yeah, and they're, they're so glad yeah. they did because they get to have an adventure, and it changes their life too. And we're never asking anybody of something that's not gonna that's not gonna help them. You know, that's not. I'm not saying, hey, give me your house so I can live in it, and you don't have <laughs> anything. You know, I'm not asking for that. Yeah, absolutely. Tell everybody how they can find you guys. So the best thing I think is to go to our website, brightbluegorilla.com. And you can find our music there, our movies there, and you can email us there and we'll answer you. And we'd... uh, (laughs) Operators are standing by. Gorillas are standing by. 36 Husbands is on iTunes, Amazon, Google Play, Voodoo. Yeah, I'll put links to all of that on heyhumanpodcast.com too, so that people want to go to a one-stop shop they can find everything great. too yeah awesome great. yeah That's thank great. you both so much for being a part of this robin and michael i i really appreciate it it's been a lot of fun just hearing your story and and uh pushing out into the universe you know sounds great Yay. it was fun Good. it was really yeah, thanks thank really nice thanks for listening everybody bye rate and review hey human on itunes or wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks. Bye.